Do you want to make AI generated images, but you're not very good with computers? Maybe even the absolute basics confuse you, so software such as Comfy UI only gives you a headache. Well, fear not, young wannabe nerdling, for now Focus has IP adapter support to give you mid journey like image prompting. Yes, Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Road and Geekery, where today we delve into the world of using the brand new image prompts available in Focus, as well as being really easy to install. Even for Microsoft Windows beginners, Focus has a simple interface allowing you to just focus on prompting. No more spaghetti nodes or different tabs all over the place giving you all sorts of different interfaces. No. Focus just has everything all in one place on the one screen. Thanks to these image prompts, you don't really need to make Laura's anymore. Maybe you have a person you want in a different pose. No problem. Pick that person, select the pose, et voila, person in pose. The documentation gives us a quick overview of the features and also tells us this. Technically, this feature is based on a mixture of IP adapter, a pre-computed negative embedding from the Focus team, an attention hacking algorithm also from the Focus team, and an adaptive balancing weighting algorithm as well. Okay, so I guess now we know how it works, but why did they do it? Oh, it says there as well. The motivation of these efforts is to achieve a best match to the mid-journey image prompt. I think that's at least the fifth time mid-journey has died this year. Rest in peace, mid-journey. All right then, this table gives us a little selection of differences between mid-journey, some other stable diffusion image generators, and Focus. It's mostly accurate, but as anyone who has used IP adapter before knows, many of the issues they're saying here really only apply if you use IP adapter on full power. For example, IP adapter does work with text prompts in Comfy UI and you are able to get diversity, just don't use it at full power. Focus has exactly the same problem if you do that. So here I've got my input image of a rather cool rodent, stop at one and a weight of one. I'm using the paper craft flat paper cut style there. And do these images come out in that style? Well, I'll leave it up to you to decide. However, if you lower the power and the default on this is actually 0.6, and 0.4, so this is exactly the same thing, just with the default weights, then I think you'll see that the style has more accurately been applied. And that's much like in my previous video, where I made the paper cut style rodent in Comfy UI with IP adapter and found that it worked best around 0.3. So maybe take that table with a pinch of salt, but the rest of the document is good. In its simplest form here, you can use one image without any prompting at all, and you'll get a reimagining of that image. Of course, you can use prompts as well. There we've got a single image with a text prompt, and we are turning that dog into a cat. Obviously, what you should be doing is turning them into rodents, but never mind. You can have multiple images with or without text prompts as well. So put as many images as you like in there and they'll all get mixed in together. And you can mix styles and whatever else you want. So, you know, a big merry bag of stuff. As it shows there, we're mixing in a sort of little bird with a cute dog, we're turning it into a cat and they've got styles. And each one of those different aspects will go into your final generation. And as if that isn't enough, there's also an advanced section as well, which basically provides two different control nets, Pyracani and CPDS. All right, I think it's much easier if I show you all these things. So let's take a look at some examples. When you start Focus, it will look like this. And in order to use this brand new image prompt feature, you're going to need to click Input Image and then select the Image Prompt tab. There you'll get the four input boxes. Now, the very easiest thing to do here is just to put an image, like it says, drop image here or click to upload. So we'll put an image in there and then just click Generate. 
Wait a few seconds and you'll have your final results based on your input image. There you go. Not too bad. Or perhaps you do want to use a prompt. Maybe you want to add wearing a hat so that she's wearing a hat. Not a problem. When you regenerate again, you'll get some more similar outputs to the input, but this time wearing a hat because that's what you've prompted for. You can also apply multiple images and different styles. Now, what I've done for these tests as I'm using this image prompt feature is I've gone over to advanced and then on the style section, I've unticked the default, which is usually Focus V2 and slightly cinematic. That's because I want to see exactly how much it is influenced by these images without any styles going on in there. So, okay, let's close these advanced things down. And there we have, you know, the bearded guy and the woman. We've got the brownness in the background there. So you can see it's picked out some of the different aspects. But one thing that is quite evident is that it's a woman. There's, there's no guy in there and she hasn't got a beard. So does it make any difference which order you put these images in? Uh, no, is the answer I came to. It doesn't because I can swap those around and it will still be a woman. What does appear to make a difference, however, is the image itself. So some things are more powerful than others. In this example here, woman beats beard, for example. But if we try woman versus rodent in a paper cut style, as you can see, that has given us rather a weird mix. That's kind of 50-50 on both of them, I think, there. All right, let's try some other ones. What about woman versus famous painting? As you can see there, famous painting guy in a puffy shirt playing what looks like a guitar. And it's still kept woman. That's, it seems to be more powerful than painting as well. We've got the photo style, but it has added that guitar in. So some aspects just seem to blend really well with the images. Others are a lot more powerful. Perhaps you want different styles, not a problem. All you have to do is prompt for it or select from one of those styles on the right hand side. Here you can see mixing the woman with a picture of lots of shoes and the prompt watercolor painting of a woman in a shoe shop. And there you go, you see it's got the flowery top, it's even got his apron, all the different shoes in the background. So it's kind of mixed the two images together and blended it with our prompt as well to give us those final generations. If you want to go really advanced, then down at the bottom there, tick the advanced button and you'll have a whole array of different controls open up. Now, images don't have to be image prompts. As you can see there, each image actually has three options. It can be image prompt, pyrocanny or CPDS. Canny being an edge outline and CPDS standing for contrast preserving decolorization, which is quite a funny name as they only use the structure part of the images and it doesn't really do any decolorization. All right, probably best if you see exactly what this does. So here we've got that picture of our woman again, and we've got another picture of a woman, but she is pointing up and we're using that CPDS. And as you can probably guess, there you go. It's done the woman in that pose. So it's a little bit more like the depth map model it was originally trained from. Pyrocanny does much the same thing. So here it is exactly the same, but this time it's Pyrocanny. And once again, the woman is emulating that pose. Mixing everything together, multiple images, control nets, prompts and styles can help you to give a little bit more control over your image generations. So there we've got bearded guy. I'm using Pyrocanny and CPDS for that pose and another image prompt of a bearded guy. Along with this prompt, painting of a bearded hipster wearing jeans with an alien invasion happening in the background. And there you go, that's exactly what we get. So he's in that pose, we've got his beard, we've got his little hairstyle, we've got the alien invasion going on in the background and all these different art styles mixed in as well. How much fun is that? So why not give it a go today? Or you could just watch some more Nerdy Rodent videos.